just get started and say welcome to um, the August monthly webinar from the Agriculture Communication Department. Today we're going to tackle some tips and tools for managing your Outlook email inbox. And um, I'm joined today by Elizabeth Cronin um, here from the, our department as well. And we encourage you at any, this is an open conversation. Um, Elizabeth and I are not experts. We are just people that um, aspire to keep semi organized and productive email inboxes. And so if at any time you have a question or you have a tip or something that um, you want to share with the group, please feel free to jump in and let us know or write it in the conversation um, area and we will get to it as soon as we can. So, um, so first things first, we're just going to get started with some quick tips and advice that Elizabeth and I have, and then um, we'll kind of get into what we call the nitty gritty a little bit uh, later, more um, how to's in terms of um, sorting your inbox and managing your inbox. So first things first, my very first, I'm going to start off with a quick trip, quick tip, and um, that includes being ruthless in your email inbox. Um, one of the things, uh, the way I kind of got interested in managing my email inbox came about from um, a working out loud uh, circle that I went through. And so my goal was about how to be more productive. And so I kind of did a deep dive into reading everything I could about time management and productivity. And, and it, a lot of it started with um, getting rid of the clutter in your life. And I think that includes your email inbox as well. So, um, you know, things that are you're never going to respond to, things that don't pertain to you, don't leave them in there. Hit the delete button and get them out of there. Um, you don't need them. The same goes with unsubscribing. Um, all too often, I think we uh, think, oh, hey, I'm going to go read that, or this is a really neat newsletter that I um, I know will be important to my life and we we go subscribe to it. Well, maybe a month goes by and you read that newsletter and um, and then things get busy and you don't read it for a couple weeks and then two months later you find that every time that newsletter comes in you think, eh, I'm going to read it later or this, whatever it is, um, get rid of it. Go find the unsubscribe button and uh, get it out of your inbox so that you don't have to spend time on it each time it comes in. So um, be ruthless, delete, um, unsubscribe, and use the one minute rule. If something comes into your email inbox and it um, takes you less than a minute to respond, do it right there. Respond right when it's right on your mind so that you can uh, get that taken care of and get it sent off and right out of your email inbox. Um, so if it takes less than a minute to reply, do it and get it off your plate. So those are my quick tips. And now Elizabeth is going to share some of hers. Sure. I'm actually just going to present my um, outlook here. I kind of follow the same tips that Kelly mentioned. I think of it as kind of a triage for my inbox you know what what do I what can I do first and how can I clear things out so I don't feel bogged down by um, everything that's in my inbox um, is my um, outlook showing yep you're good okay, Elizabeth. perfect um, so when I come in um, I'm I feel I'm the kind of person I don't want a lot of emails in my inbox I kind of use my inbox mainly as my um, only the emails that have actions that I need to do something with them. Um, so, you know, after a weekend or even just, you know, I come into work in the morning and I have an inbox that's full, I go through the same thing that Kelly mentioned about, you know, if it doesn't apply to me directly, I'll just go and I'll delete all of those. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, and I, I guess I, I kind of know what what things I know don't apply to me. I'm just going to clear those out. The first thing I did, I marked them unread. I don't like that bold, you know, how I have bold 10 unread emails here. I don't like to see that in my deleted items either. So I go ahead and marked them unread first. Looks like I missed a few. Um, and then it's just a lot easier for me to know what do I need to do today. And that's right now I'm down to eight emails. It's a much easier, uh, less daunting task. Um, and then I would go through and figure out, you know, some of these might be a quick reply, a yes, I, you know, something quick, and I would do that. It would be my next step. 
Um, now, Kelly talked a little bit about time management and productivity, and I think one of the important things with email, we can you can spend so much time replying to emails or getting caught up. You know, you have an email, you see it, and you want to respond to it immediately, and that can really interfere with you know what your your project that you're trying to get done. So one of the other things I do to be more productive. Um, I just went ahead in my settings, in my um, options here in mail, you can turn off those notifications if you don't like the little pop-up that happens every time you get a new email or a sound. Um, I just went ahead and I unclicked that, that's under message arrival here. I don't want to see when I have a new email or get a sound. And then I can minimize my inbox when I'm working on something else and I won't be distracted by every little email that comes in and I can focus more on something without getting distracted. I know Elizabeth and I when we were um, uh, planning on this webinar we both um, talked about how we couldn't cite the specific article but we both talked about how we'd read articles about um, notification psychology and that when a notification um, pops up on your desktop or whether it's a ding that comes to your phone or to your computer, you know, it's human nature to want to instantly look at that or respond to that. So if you're in the middle of working on a, you know, a big project or you're right in the middle of, um, you know, a meeting or you're, you're whatever, you're brainstorming something that, that um, you know, needs some time and attention. And when that ding goes off, we inherently want to respond to that. So we completely break our train of thought and our concentration and we go check on that email. Or if, we, if you are like me and you have double screens up, my email tends to be on my second screen all the time. And so it's human nature to want to constantly be looking at that as it comes in. Well, then as soon as you look at it, then you have, you know, when you're ready to go back to the project you are working on, you have to rethink through, okay, where was I at or middle of the sentence or the middle of this thought. So by turning off those notifications, it removes that temptation to want to be constantly looking at our email. You know, there are some um, thoughts about, you know, only checking email twice a day, setting aside a, a certain time on your calendar when during this 30 minutes in the morning or during this one hour in the afternoon, I check email. And I know for most of us that is not, um, you know, we kind of live and die by our email here within um, extension and, and you know, all ag. And so, um, you know, that might not be workable, but, you um, you know, maybe there is, you know, whatever system works for you, we encourage you to do that, but it might be worth it to think about turning off your notifications or minimizing your email and, and setting aside some time, specific time each day to do that. So um, I think now uh, we're going to talk, kind of get into some of the how-tos of this webinar, and I'm going to let Elizabeth continue on with um, her system of using folders and flags to keep everything in its place. Some of this might seem really basic to some of you. You probably are already using these tools, but um, it's just kind of a maybe a reminder or a, um, something. Maybe it's a little bit different from what you do. Um, I use extensively use folders to sort my email. So I like I like an empty inbox. And right now I have eight things in my inbox. If I get any more than that, I, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. But you know, what do I do? How do I get to that point? Um, obviously, I leave the ones if I need to take an action or I'm, I'm still working on it. I leave it here. But there are emails I have that I just need to keep for reference. And instead of having just one folder for all my reference materials and searching for that, I created folders for uh, for different things. For example, my top folder here is for this year's fall conference. And in there, I even have subfolders for, you know, breakout sessions, which, you know, each area, subject matter, has its own folder and then I can keep track of those emails as they come in. I will probably need them later when I'm designing registration. Um, so, I'll, But I don't need them immediately so I'm just going to get them, clear them out of my inbox. Um, you know, so find have a place to store them so I can find them when I need them but I don't need to look at them today because it doesn't apply to my day today. Um, and I it, gets a little bit extensive. I showed this to my husband and he got uh, overwhelmed, said it would actually take him more time to try and figure out where to put emails than um, it, it would, then this would save him time. But 
So I think it's something that you can customize and use to the level that it works for you. Uh, what I do maybe doesn't work for Kelly. What Kelly does doesn't work for me. Um, this is what I do um, to help me stay organized. Another thing that I would do, um, I use the, the, the flag reminders for emails. So if I've deleted or filed away all the emails that I need, some of them I'll take action on immediately, but sometimes I will use flags to remind me there's something that's coming up in a couple weeks. So um, I have an email, I don't want to deal with it now. The deadline is the end of the month. So I'm going to, um, you can you can just click on the flag, it'll turn it red, add it to your tasks. I don't use tasks in Outlook, um, but I like to use this reminder option. Um, so if it's due at the end of the month, I might want a reminder on the 30th that I need to work on this before the end of the month. It's not going to take me very long and I don't have the time to do it now. I can pick what time I want to be reminded and it will pop up just like when you have a meeting. Um, then if I want now I can file this away. See it's related to conference. I can just drag it over here and it'll, I don't have to see it today, but it'll pop up before I need to take action on it. This is awesome. Um, when Elizabeth first showed me this system, I will admit I was so envious about um, the fact that she had like eight emails in her inbox. I think um, knowing, you know, chatting with some other coworkers, I think my inbox probably, you know, I don't know, maybe has 500 emails in it. I can probably go back a year or two in terms of um, what I have. So Elizabeth's system about folders and, and how everything has a place um, was really intriguing to me. And it's something that I'm um, maybe not on the scale that Elizabeth is using, but I, I'm hoping to devise my own folder system, which you'll see here in just a minute, that maybe is the scaled down version of what Elizabeth is doing. Um, some things to note that I thought, you know, were kind of interesting um, about Elizabeth's system was that, you know, even once she, is she, as she clears them, if they're unread, they still show up um, with, you know, as a, an unread within that folder system. So Elizabeth, do you kind of go back, if you see something, do you sort, um, even if it's unread with the intent to go back, or do you only put them in folders once you've read them, responded to them, or taken some form of action on them? Can you share a little yeah, bit about that? Usually I don't file them away unless the action is done and I it's more emails that I need to refer back to later. Uh, but sometimes if it's, um, so I have some things that I work on as time allows. Um, so our ACOM photo gallery, if I get photos, I'm not in there every day, so I might just slide it over here um, and then I know can see easily there are two things that I haven't, two photo that I haven't dealt with yet. So the next time I'm in our gallery, I can upload those photos. But awesome. usually I wait until after the action has happened. It looks like um, Linda Schuster um, let us know that she does subscribe to some, what she calls, junk emails. I have the same, have the same type of things, Linda, that specifically so that coupon codes come to me. I use rules so automatically, Outlook automatically files it away. We're going to be actually talking about that and kind of showing um, how to create those rules uh, towards the end of our webinar today. So I love that you chimed in with, with that. Um, does anybody else have any, like I said, I was totally intrigued when Elizabeth showed me her folder system. And I think that like she mentioned, you know, you've got to do what creates, you got to create um, a system that works for you no matter how complicated it is or simple it is. But does anybody else use folders to uh, manage their inbox at all? All right. Like we've got a few people typing. All right. Thumbs up. Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. Love to see that. Like I said, if at any point um, anybody wants to chime in uh, or ask a question, we um, uh, please do so. So um, now I'm going to take over and uh, show you a little bit um, about a system that I 
I didn't, I'm sure I, you know, there's other people that do this and this is, you know, do some, or there's other people that use this system, but I'm going to show you um, how I use categories to uh, work for me. So let's see here. Share my desktop. Alrighty, hopefully you all are seeing my um, Outlook inbox right now. So, um, so as I said, I've kind of adopted Elizabeth's folder system. So I've created, however many this is, 10 to 15 folders here that uh, work for me that I've started to sort things into. And so I'm already feeling more productive uh, in my um, email inbox. But um, you know, once I go through and, and sort into folders, um, I was looking for a way to prioritize things that I needed to get done within a day or two. And so I discovered the categorize feature up here and decided to kind of make it work for me. And so um, what categories does is that it allows you to create a category that, uh, that um, it allows you to, to color code essentially your inbox and so you can create categories that that mean something to you um, for instance for me I have home page placement that might be an email that has an idea about something I can put on the NDSU extension or NDSU agriculture homepage maybe it pertains to a uh, meeting that I have going on maybe it's something within my own personal scheduling Let's say I have an email that just needs a quick response. I can uh, put it in here. It's ready to go. Social media idea, um, sound ag, to do and to read are probably uh, my two biggest uh, categories that I use. I, of course, use read <laughs> to, uh, as my to do cat um, category so that it's stuff that I know is top of the list and um, needs some attention. So. Um, when an email comes in for me, if I can't quickly respond, if it if is an if it isn't a quick delete, a super quick response, or a folder, I hope to categorize it in some way. So, um, the neat thing about categories is that they um, you can sort by category up here, so that um, anything that you categorize goes to the top of your inbox. Then within that. Um, you can hide and show categories based on what you want to see. So if um, your to-do category and maybe your response needed category are the things that mean the most to you, those are the things you can show so that they stay at the top of, you know, to the top of your inbox. Um, anything new that's coming in then flows under that. So here Amy is wanting to know if this AgCom webinar will be archived. I need to respond to Amy right after here, so I'm going to go, I'm going to right click on her email, go to categorize, and put in response needed. And it marks that with a green flag as I've indicated, and it puts it in the response needed category. So um, as Elizabeth and I, like I said, we're preparing, um, we talked about how, you know, Elizabeth's system of folders and my system of, of categories might be a great way to um, you know, long-term email management and then and then cat being the folder system and um, very short-term kind of, you know, 24 to 48 hour email management might come in the categories process. So does anybody else use categories or any other um, system like that to, to prioritize exactly or kind of short-term priorities management? Got a few people typing. I've just found um, that it helps me, you know, kind of stay on task throughout the day. And um, it's a great way to, um, you know, when I come back to my email after working on a project to instantly go, okay, what's, you know, kind of first things first, what's in my to-do category that needs, you know, um, an instant something, or can I quickly go respond to some people that are waiting on a response for me? Um, so um, 
I've really enjoyed that feature quite a bit. So that's how I use categories. Um, anybody have any questions about that? Um, one of the things about categories that I found out that is um, I wish I could do is that I wish I could arrange them based on I would I would love to have my to do and my response needed at the top. Um, but I haven't figured out the way to do that other than just to minimize, you know, I have a to read later um, section on things I want to save and, and get back to by the end of the week. And I can collapse that folder so that I don't have to see all of them, but I haven't found a way to move that to the bottom of the stack yet. So it has its limitations, but um, I've enjoyed being able to prior prioritize my emails that way. So um, if we don't have any questions about uh, folders or categories or any other features, I think I'm going to um, turn it back over to Elizabeth and she's got some ideas about um, how to create rules or why rules might be um, useful and or creating uh, meetings from email. So I'm going to have Elizabeth uh, take it back over and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to start with this. I, I just discovered this. So I always thought, you know, I'd get an email. We have an email string going with a few people. We're having a discussion. Someone says, let's get together and have a meeting or, you know, let's have a face-to-face -face meeting. I would go into my calendar, create it, go back to the email, get all of the email addresses I need, get all the information that I need for the meeting. Um, but here I just learned there's a, a button here right at the top. Uh, it'll show up too if you, um, it's this little icon, it's a calendar icon. If you click on that, it will open up a meeting invitation with all of the people who are on the email string. Uh, you might need to adjust the subject and then make it more, you know, what are we meeting about, set a location. You can just go ahead, pick a time, pick a date. If you want to look at the scheduling assistant to see if we you know who's available when, uh, but it's a, a quick way to get everything you need right in your meeting invite without having to go back and forth between your inbox and your calendar. I also learned, I actually don't want this meeting, um, you can, if you don't want a meeting, it's just something you want on your calendar, you can take an email, say this, this message has some meeting dates and times, I want to put that on my calendar. I can take it, I can drag it right down here to my uh, calendar. Same thing, it'll pull up a um, appointment for me. I can set the date that I need, September 12th. And I think that's 2 o'clock. It doesn't have the time there, but um, 2 to 3 o'clock, save and close. And that now it's on my calendar with all the information. I can delete it from my inbox because it will be on my calendar. Um, so that I have recently been using a lot to save some time, make make sure I have all the information I need on my calendar. I don't know, maybe maybe other people have been using that for a lot longer, but... Um, I didn't know about it, yeah. so <laughs> at least there's one other person that, oh, that's awesome. So, all right. Elizabeth, do you want to, um, we weren't sure about, you know, um, we wanted to talk about creating rules, but we um, were trying to brainstorm some ways that you all might use them in a way that we don't. So if you've got any ideas about how you use rules, I know Linda, like I said, mentioned that she uses it to sort out, um, you know, coupon codes or something like that. So if you've got a way that you use rules, um, please share it because we were having, you know, you all do some things out in some counties or at the RECs or maybe within your department on campus that we don't um you know, couldn't think of a way to use rules, but Elizabeth does use it in um, some of the things she does. So she's going to talk a little bit about how she uses the rules function to help her sort emails into folders as well. I don't use rules very often. In my mind, rules help if there's something like Linda's example, something she wants to save, read, maybe refer back to later. Um, but something that I want to make sure that I'm not missing an action because I've sent an email to a folder instead of to my inbox. But one of the ways that I found it useful is for registrations for fall conference. So when people go and or for um, the support staff conference, when people go through Marketplace to register, I get an email for every single one of those registrations. And that gets to be a lot, especially for fall conference when I'm seeing 
230 or I mean, um, re just registration confirmations. So I don't want all of those going to my inbox. I want those going somewhere else because um, I do need them if someone were to have a question, need to change their registration or uh, just to confirm something. But otherwise, I don't need to look through them. Um, so I pulled a registration from last year's conference just as an example. I'm going to create the rule based on the subject line. They will all have the same subject line, registration confirmation. So we can just walk through. It's in under File, uh, right here, Manage Rules and Alerts. And I want to create, oh, I did create one earlier as I was playing around. Let's get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to create a new rule. Uh, at the top, it has some quick options for you. I want to use the second one, move messages with specific words in the subject. And then down here in step two, you can specify what words you're looking for. Registration confirmation. And I did create a folder already, so we'll put them in registrations. Next. Um, we already, I already have my conditions specified. And I want it to move the message and stop processing. If I had other rules, I, you know, I could have that um, checked or not checked, but we just have the one right now. And I could set an exception. For example, someone might reply back to me with their email and have a question about it specifically. So I could um, select something, maybe my name is, you know, in the two box, or maybe it's sent only to me, or you know, I could change that, um, I think. The one I used had to do with it being a reply, but right now let's just keep this simple. And I have one in my inbox here, so I have the name already set, set up rule options. I want to run this on what's already in my inbox and turn it on now. Let's see if it works. I'm going to click apply. Okay. And now that email is no longer here and it shows up. I have it here. It's unread, so it shows up in my registrations. One registration. And that is helpful. Um, as I get new ones, they would show up in there and I could see. So if Becky or the chairs, the conference chairs ask me how many registrations do we have, I can uh, open up my conference folder, take a quick look. Oh, we have one registration so far. We have 100. Um, and then we can kind of gauge, do we need to send out another reminder? Do we need to... Um, how far are we? So that's what uh, one way that I use rules. Um, Does anybody have any other way that they use rules? Um, like I said, out in the county or at an REC that they'd be willing to share if it's if they um, think those of us, the rest of us on the call could benefit. If you do, please type it in the chat pod. Um, let's see here. Any other, we've talked about folders and categories. Um, we've talked about being, uh, you know, ruthless in terms of unsubscribing and deleting things that you just aren't going to read. Um, any other questions you all might have about Outlook or um, tips or tools to manage your inbox? Kelly, I have one, uh, maybe sure. just a plug for, for that being ruthless about deleting. Uh, just a reminder that email is considered open records uh, for the state of North Dakota. So uh, maybe just to, to think about, do I really need to keep this email? Is it really essential? Uh, and do you know, if the people of North Dakota for some reason wanted to pull my email records, is this something that you know I want to have around in storage. I think there's a lot. It's so easy um, and I'm probably guilty of this with my extensive folder system that I file something away and then you know six months later it's no longer relevant to my life anymore. Um, to maybe think about deleting, going back and deleting when something is over. Um, I mean there are some cases when you might need something to keep for records management if it's directly related to a record but I think most people err on the side of keeping more than deleting, and I think we should maybe just keep in mind that deleting is 
okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Elizabeth and I used some, what we thought were some good resources um, in terms of, uh, uh-oh, that might be mm-hmm. some good resources that we um, found um, that talk about some of the tips and tools we talked about today. We also, um, I included a link to, um, we talked about unsubscribing from newsletters, but my favorite newsletter that I use to, um, with, that I, I, the one newsletter that I practically always read is from a blogger that has tips and tricks on um, email productivity. And so um, I really enjoy her stuff. And then if you want to learn more about records management and things that, um, you should be keeping and or not keeping. We also have a link to the NDSU records management um, site as well. And so um, as we wrap up, uh, we welcome your any other questions or comments. Um, like I said, if you've got something that you're doing, whether you think it's a big or small step that you'd like to share, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, we hope that we've been able to provide some things for you that um, make managing your Outlook email inbox um, easier and um, less time consuming so you have more time for um, the awesome work you do. So if you've got any other questions or comments, please speak up and um, we will have this webinar recorded. So we'll leave it open for your questions. All righty. Well, um, got a few people typing here. I'm going to wait to see if anybody's questions came in. Um, if not, again, Elizabeth and I thank you so much for your time. And if you've got any um, thing you want to share with us or any questions, please feel free to um, send us an email personal privately and and we'll try to help you as best we can and um, again thanks for joining the agcom webinar and we'll see you next month have a great rest of your day